When our children are born, their DNA is beautifully expressed through their skin, their hair and their features. The next step to strengthen this identity, of course, is giving them the ability to be able to express themselves in their mother tongue. You see, an identity is what gives a child that confidence that every parent wishes for. So how do we do it? Let's get into the 101 of teaching a child how to speak bilingually. Akabo, it's your girl Abna from Destination Africa with another warm welcome to the village that promises to support today's Afro parents to inspire and empower of learners of today and leaders of tomorrow. Guys, make sure you stick around till the end because we do have a very special resource for you coming right up. Now, I know you guys wanna delve into this one, learning how to raise that bilingual child or even knowing how to raise that bilingual child. Hmm, I'm gonna put a disclaimer out there though, just before we start, just to let you know this is just guidance and direction. And of course, please feel free to add your bits in there to enhance your experience of parenting. So, bilingual children, what is it and exactly how is it that we're supposed to be able to do it? Well, I'm gonna go back a bit. We often talk about why our children are disenfranchised and treated unfairly and so on and so forth. But as parents, I want you to stop a minute and consider what is it that we can be doing as parents even before they go out to face the real world to make a big difference. Okay, let's do this. Now, whether you realize it or not, the reason our children truly lack confidence and trust in the community is simply because some of their identity has been lost. It's missing or it's been taken away from them. And as a result, they no longer have that trust and faith in the community as they should do. So I want to go into the etymology of the word identity. What does it really mean? When you look at the word identity, it comes from the medieval word idem, which means the same. What does the same mean? The same simply means having the likenesses and characteristics of somebody that is your kindred, somebody that's from your tribe. And wherever you may find yourselves in different situations, you can still identify with them because you are the same. Now, I found that was really powerful because what should happen to us as a people is that wherever we go, we should be able to identify with our culture, our language, our heritage, and of course, our traditions. So why is it that as parents, we are losing our children and we're losing out and teaching our children their identity, their language? I wanna get right into how we can instill that back in the children and change this cycle. So guys, the thing is, when you forsake your languages, you're literally forsaking yourself. When you're superimposing somebody else's language over yours, you have to remember that language or that country that you've forsaken yourself for simply has power over you. So what is it that we're teaching our children directly and indirectly? Let's get into how we're going to teach our children their mother tongue. Guys, remember, speaking a language is not just verbal. It's the reading, the writing, the understanding, as well as the gestures. So even before you decide you're going to teach your children their mother tongue, we're gonna to have to do some background work first. Here are the tips for your background work. Number one, make a conscious effort to learn the language yourself. You're gonna join in as a team and you're gonna make that conscious effort one-on-one, -on -one, motivate each other to learn the language. If it's a second language for you, you're gonna learn that language yourself. Number two, always ensure that you've got literature nearby that you can just lean on or just depend on. Make sure that you are speaking your language, learning the language through reading and writing and understanding. Number three, you speak that language everywhere. When I say everywhere, I'm talking the supermarkets, at church, the shops, on the way to school, on the way back from school. Speak the language absolutely everywhere. Please do not reserve it for just the confines of your home where the two of you can only hear yourselves trying to speak it. Number four, practice, practice, practice. Practice makes perfect practice. You just have to keep going and keep speaking this language until you start to master it and really start to get the hang of it, okay? Laugh in your language, cry in your language, scream in your language, do everything in your language. The more you practice, the better you become. Number five, when teaching your child how to speak their mother tongue, please do not supplement foreign words for the words that you don't understand. So, 
I remember when we were trying to teach our children how to speak their mother tongue. And it just, it dawned on me at that point that there were so many words that I didn't really know. Words like umbrella in chi, f telephone in chi, socks in chi. I literally had to go back and learn these words in order to be able to teach the children. And what made it a really nice learning experience was that we both learned together. Point number six. Guys, if as parents, this is your first time learning your language also, make sure you get the community involved. Involve the aunties, the uncles, the parents, everyone that you know is fluent in the language. It's gonna take a while because they're so used to speaking to you in English. But after a while, when they realize that you're serious, they will also take you seriously. And I have to say, they are gonna laugh. But if they laugh, you just keep right on going. And sooner or later, you're gonna find out that they're gonna just start speaking that language with you. So there you have it. Those are your background points. And I hope it's really inspired you to go away and really consider why you should be teaching your children their mother tongue. Now we've got the background stuff out of the way, we're just gonna get straight into action. Now, action is gonna require consistency, it's gonna require commitment, and it's gonna require just a steady mind so you're consistently focused. So point number one, ensure that you find the necessary literature. It's really important, guys. Remember, language is, isn't just verbal, it's also about reading, writing, and understanding. Point number two, start with the basics. Teach your children how to ask for things. Teach them the colors, teach them the weather, teach them the human body parts. And from there, you put those into sentences, compartmentalize them, and then off you go. Point number three, have some proverbs and affirmations that you learn and speak to one another to really affirm what you're doing. This is a really nice, positive game that really encourages and supports you both during the time that you're learning how to speak your thing. Number four, ensure that you have a designated somebody that you go to every single time that maybe you don't understand something or you want to clarify something. It could be a mother, an auntie, an uncle, somebody who really understands the language. And finally, point number five. You know, when we were raising our children and they were just learning how to speak their mother tongue, we used to have days where we would have phone calls and we would call grandma and granddad to just speak to them in their mother tongue. What it also did was affirm and encourage and really build up and develop their social skills. So get them to have those conversations in those languages. And guys, before you know it, your children will be bilingual or better still, have mastered their mother tongue. And there you have it. Africa has hundreds and hundreds of languages and only a small fraction of our children are speaking these languages. It says something about our people and it sends a message to our children and it's not one of confidence. Guys, let's give them what they deserve. Let's honor and respect them with the languages of their identity. Let's build up that strong foundation to ensure that whether it's Patwa, Creole, Chi, Yoruba, Lingala, Swahili, Amharic, Fosa, Zulu, or even Indebele, we have to do this for our children. Their mother tongue comes first, it's primary, and they deserve it. Until the next time we see you, if you've loved this, please ensure that you subscribe, and of course, share with somebody who would really benefit from the love and the support of this. Until next time, guys, let's give it those two taps on the shoulder, flick it right back, and chill.